it's not good enough to just do something for patients because we think it works or because it seems to be okay. Uh, we like to have some evidence and some data that kind of backs it up that this is the best way to do this particular thing for these patients. And so it's always nice to have some, some data and some information that back you up. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Health Science Coach Podcast. My name is Drew Garner and I'm a health science and physical education teacher. This is a podcast to help students, parents, and recent graduates learn about pathways into healthcare and sports medicine careers. These industry professionals lay out how their experiences have helped them get to where they are now. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel or download through your podcast player. Thanks again for spending some time with us today. Now let's dig in. Welcome, Dr. Laura Clanky Bergman. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Um, so can you give us a little detail about your career and what a nurse scientist does as well as a, a professor of nursing over at University of Kansas? I sure can. So um, I've actually been a professor here at KU since 2013. Okay. And then I, I taught actually in the School of Nursing before I even arrived here when I used to live in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, but um, I think people are kind of pretty familiar with what a nursing professor does. I teach in our undergrad program. Okay. for students who, you know, have come out of high school and are wanting to be a nurse and wanting to work um, as a nurse after college. And so I teach in the classroom um, to our undergrad students in the School of Nursing. Um, and then as of just this past August, so it's even been sort of less than a year, I took an appointment, uh, what we refer to in kind of academia talk, um, a joint appointment. So I teach in the School of Nursing, but I also do some of my work actually in the hospital, the in the University of Kansas Health System. Right. So I still teach about 40% of my time in the School of Nursing, and then 60% of my time is this new nurse scientist role. And basically what that means is it's a nurse who does research, okay. um, who does research projects. Um, and my particular role is doing research in the hospital. Uh, what can what nurses can do better, what different training they can undergo to ultimately make patient care safer and better. Okay. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that's something that is always going to be changing and adapting and, you know, working with different patients in different hospitals, there's always something to learn to make the, the system kind of move a little bit smoother and, and more efficient. Absolutely. And in healthcare and in nursing, especially, we refer to it as evidence-based practice. Okay. Um, it's not, you know, basically what that means is it's not good enough to just do something for patients because we think it works or because it, seems to be okay. Uh, we like to have some evidence and some data that kind of backs it up that this is the best way to do this particular thing for these patients. And so it's always nice to have some some data and some information that back you up. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, talked with a, a guy that does real world evidence in uh, pharmaceuticals. And yeah. so kind of the same thing, you know, seeing what absolutely. happens in real life and then applying it to future systems. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. So you studied yeah. undergrad at Purdue and got your bachelor's of science as a registered nurse um, and then worked for uh, about three years in the ER uh, in St. Louis and New York. How did you kind of go from um, Purdue to St. Louis and New York and how did that kind of look coming out of out of school? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm from um, a really small town outside of St. Louis. Okay. Um, so when it was time to go to college, I knew I, at that point, I knew that I wanted to be a nurse um, and I kind of wanted to get away and just kind of go somewhere that not everybody from my high school was going to be going and kind of meet new people and start over. Right. Um, and so I looked at Purdue because Purdue um, isn't terribly far from St. Louis. It was about four hours or so, um, but it was two states away. So I was kind of starting over and, and meeting new people and not going, like I said, to the same place that everybody was going. And they had a really good nursing program. Okay. And so that was kind of the, the double whammy for me. Right. Um, and so it's a four, it was a four year program. I stayed at Purdue for those four years and then ended up moving back to St. Louis because that's a, you know, kind of the, the general area that I was from. Right. And um, they, I worked then as a very new grad with hardly any experience at all at a, ho a big hospital in St. Louis called Barnes Jewish Hospital. It's a really big academic teaching hospital there. And um, I worked in their emergency department in their trauma center as a new grad. So whew, that was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine jumping out of 
at a nursing school into the trauma center and, you know, in St. Louis would be yes. a, a different experience. It was an education. I, I always tell my own nursing students now that, you know, I had a great education at Purdue. I had a, it was a great program, great professors, great experience. I learned more in the first six months of my job at Barnes than I did in all four years of nursing school at Purdue. I mean, just the learning curve was just straight up from everything that you see and all the, the crazy experiences that you get in a big urban level one trauma center like that. Right. Um, and then you went over to, to New York for a little while. How did yeah. that transition? So it sounds really silly, but I'll just be honest. I loved New York. I went to New York um, like on a family vacation, like whenever I finished high school and fell in love with New York City. Just I, I loved the the excitement of it, the kind of like electricity of it. I loved all the different um, experiences that you can have there. And when I left um, on that vacation, I literally told my family, I will live here someday. I will, I will be back. <laughs> um, and the way that I kind of did it was through a nurse, um, travel, uh, experience. So there's such a, now there currently is, but there was at the time too, such a nursing shortage around the country that there's a lot of these agencies that will give nurses, these travel nurses, these short little three month contracts to kind of move around and travel around the country in hospitals where there's a really big shortage. Right. Um, and it's really nice because they pay for your housing. They, um, you know, find you a place to live. And so you can kind of really travel around and see different parts of the country while getting paid and while working as a nurse. And so um, after a couple of years working in St. Louis and at Barnes, I knew that I had gotten a lot of great experience and I thought I was kind of ready to move on. And so I actually tr went to New, to New York as a travel nurse. Um, and instead of moving around every three months the way that travel nurses oftentimes will do, I just kept renewing my contract at the same hospital in New York every three months and ended up staying for over a year. Um, so I, I kind of worked the system there yeah. uh, because as I mean, as I'm sure a lot of people know, um, housing is not cheap in New York, yeah. um, but the agency paid for my apartment. So I had this great apartment, this really nice neighborhood, like half a block from Central Park, and they paid for it while I worked in an ER in New York. It was It was a pretty great experience. That's pretty cool. Um, so then after, you know, you had your, your three, four years of experience in, in the ER, you decided to go back and get your master's. Um, yeah. University of Pennsylvania, and you got your nursing master's of uh, science and nursing with a health leadership and education emphasis. Yeah. Uh, what kind of led you to want to get your master's one and emphasize in the leadership and education? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think there's kind of a, a two part answer to that. One, I saw very early on, even in my own education at Purdue, um, that I thought I, I was really interested and fascinated in the process of education and in educating new generations of nurses. I had some great professors of my own that really motivated and inspired me and just honestly impressed me. I thought, my gosh, they've had such interesting lives and interesting stories, and they've made such a difference in their patients' lives, but also in their, their students' lives. And I kind of really started to think about nursing education while I was still in school myself. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the first answer. And then, you know, went into working in the emergency room and got great experience there too. But oftentimes as um, an ER nurse, I would get students myself either rotating through on clinical or precepting them as new graduates or orienting them as they started their job. And I really loved, I found a lot of satisfaction and I found it very rewarding to be able to kind of impart my own knowledge and my own experience um, to people as they're learning the ropes. And that also became really obvious to me as even working at the bedside that, okay. you know what, I think I really like this. I enjoy it. I find it really kind of rewarding and exciting. Yeah. And so when I um, left New York, I decided like, I think it's time. I've had several years of experience now as an ER nurse, and I think I'm ready to go back and continue my education. Okay. And uh, so you went to Pennsylvania and while you were there, you worked as a clinical research nurse. Mm -hmm. How did working on your master's and uh, being a nurse kind of go hand in hand through those uh, three years? Yeah, that's that's a great question, too. Um, you know, it's interesting. I completely when I moved to Philadelphia and started my graduate program, um, 
as you can see, like I stepped away from the emergency department. It had been a pretty intense three years. I worked straight nights um, that entire time. Um, I was a little tired and a little, I'm going to be honest, a little burned out um, of that, that area of nursing. And so I thought, you know what, if I'm also going to go back and, and continue to work on my education, I think I kind of want to try a different area of nursing. Um, maybe something that's not quite so intense, quite so stressful, especially while I'm, I'm adding on going to school on top of it. And so I took a job when I moved to Philly that was completely different than the ER, about as 180 degrees as you can get from the emergency room. Uh -huh. It was this office job, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five, um, working in the Department of Neurology for the University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. And I, I, as you said, I was the research coordinator, nurse research coordinator for their department there that worked a lot with patients with ALS and Lou Gehrig's disease, kind of a debilitating neurologic disease. Um, and learned a ton about neurology and ALS and you know patient care and care of the family as they're caring for these patients and did research projects clinical trials um, for medications that might work at, at, as people may or may not know there really is no cure for als um, so i worked with a lot of um, medication clinical trials to look at medications that might help at least slow down the debilitation um, and then also just kind of like other research projects of that would impact the care that these patients received and right. It was a really good experience for me um, as I was in grad school because it also, you know, I got to focus on other areas of nursing that I wouldn't necessarily have seen in the emergency room, which I think has served me well in kind of rounding out my experience as a nurse mm -hmm. to be a better, more experienced, more round, more well-rounded educator. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I think, you know, by getting those experiences and looking at that while you're learning or getting your master's, you're able to take what you're learning in class and apply it to a different area than than you were familiar or comfortable with. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Um, so with that master's program, how, how does a master's of nursing kind of put together and what does it allow you to do differently than a undergraduate with ma a degree? Yeah, that's a great question. So a master's uh, degree in nursing, you can focus on many different things. Um, and what they kind of refer to that is as when you get when you get a graduate degree in nursing is advanced practice. So oftentimes you can kind of choose an area or choose you get a little bit more specific in like what your expertise or what your topic that you're going to focus that part of your career on. So that's to say a lot of people will choose to go back to school and get and as I'm sure some students are probably familiar with hearing like a degree that makes them a nurse practitioner. Yeah. Um, which is the type of degree where, um, you know, you're um, seeing patients almost, you know, similarly to like in a clinic or you're able to prescribe medications, some some sort of advanced roles that just a regular uh, bachelor's of science of nursing can't do. But I honestly wasn't really interested in that that clinical um, advanced degree. I knew, as I had mentioned before, that I was really interested in becoming a teacher and being a professor, which was sort of what I chose to advance, you know, my practice in. Right. And so people can go into being nurse practitioner, they can do some other things, and I chose to go the education way. Okay, cool. Um, so then while you were there also, after you finished your master's, um, you that's when you also became a, a lecturer uh, yeah. teaching courses uh, mm -hmm. for nursing concepts and care, basically. Yeah. Uh, during that time, you know, you're there for another three years working in the ER and teaching lecture. Um, what kind of experience did you get from that? And what were you able to take from there to your next role uh, to KU with you? Yeah. So it's there in those. So I um, got my master's degree at Penn and then was lucky enough to get a teaching job right there in the same in the same school that I had gotten my own master's uh, degree in. And it was there in those early years of my nursing education career and my teaching career that I realized, oh, this is it. This is my niche. This is what I love and where I truly found my passion. Not that I wasn't interested in being an ER nurse, not that I wasn't a darn good <laughs> ER nurse, but I was like, oh, this, this is what I, this is what, this is where my career has been moving toward to get to this point. Um, kind of what I talked about before, just the reward that I see 
um, and that I feel in kind of paying it forward and being that role model and being that motivator to my nursing students that I had in my own professors back in nursing school. Like I sort of saw that all come together. Um, you know, I love teaching students and nursing school is hard. Let's be real. Nursing school is tough um, and it can be really intimidating and kind of worrisome to students at, for a while because they're just not quite kind of like getting it. Yeah. And when I am teaching and I see those like oh, light bulb moments like click for those students, I love that. Like I could do that all day. And that is what I really know, learned about myself um, in those early years of teaching that like, yep, this is my niche. This is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing in nursing. And, you know, all of my good experience, both with neurologic patients and in the emergency room was great experience, but was ultimately leading me to sort of what I feel like is my true my true role, my true niche. And um, as you mentioned, at that time when I did start to become a full-time instructor, I did go back um, part-time into the emergency room again. And really the reason for that was I wanted to still keep my skills um, up to date. I wanted to be relevant to my students. I wanted to be able in class to say, oh yeah. And then on, and, you know, on Tuesday when I was working in the ER, I had this patient come in that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And really be able to show that practicality um, to my students that I, I know what, I mean, I do this, I do, I did right. this yesterday. So like, I'm, this is real. Right. Um, and I feel like because I taught now, I was even a better ER nurse. Uh -huh. And because I was an ER nurse, I was a better teacher. And like, I feel like those two things really um, made me better at the other thing, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Because it's, just taking that real world, real world experience and applying it to the classroom, to the procedures that you're teaching. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so then in 2013, you came back to uh, University of Kansas, where you are yes. now. Yes, um, And uh, clinical assistant professor for nine mm -hmm. years. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about what KU has to offer as far as nursing programs and how students kind of get involved in, in applying or getting into the program there at KU to start off with? Yeah, absolutely. So our, um, here at the University of Kansas, we actually have um, three programs in yeah. which someone can get their bachelor's of science in nursing. Um, the, the traditional kind of on-campus program is the one that I teach in. Uh-huh. Um, and that's where, um, you know, students would apply after kind of like getting two years of prereqs at another school. Oftentimes, you know, it's at the main campus in Lawrence yep. or it's K-State or, you know, other schools around um, the area. Um, they get two years of their prereqs and then they come to our campus um, yep. on, the, on, you know, for the University of Kansas School of Nursing. We also... Um, have an online RN to BSN program for nurses who maybe have gotten not a BSN, but like more of like an associate Associates degree who wants to go back and get their BSN. We have that type of offering as well. Yes. Um, and then we also have a um, third offering is for students who are going to a community college. We have several community college partnerships around the state of Kansas that partner with our program. So they can stay on their community college campus, wherever it may be throughout the state of Kansas, um, but still get a KU degree because some of the courses that they take online are through, are through um, our Kansas City program. But to be clear, um, I teach on in the very sort of traditional on-campus yeah. program here at the Med Center um, in Kansas City. Yeah. Um, so then when a student, after they take their first two years of uh, just general classes, they're able to come and join you there mm -hmm. at the physical location in um, downtown yeah. area. Yeah. Um, how long is the program then from after your first two years and what kind of classes do you teach and how many kind of hours do they need to finish yeah. out that degree? Yeah. So once they get those two years of prereq, it's two years on campus here with us. Okay. Um, and it's a total of 120 credit hours for the, for the BSN. So, you know, 120 um, credits. Um, the, it's about 58 hours of kind of general education, like those prerequisites that I mentioned, and then 62 hours of that is our nursing courses here okay. on campus. Right. Um, and, and as I mentioned, our prerequisites do not need to be taken at KU. Like they don't need to be a KU student. They can be right. from other community colleges or other universities. Um, 
but yeah, and then it's two years here on campus. Um, what's also interesting is that, yes, we have this on campus, uh, on the medical campus at, in Kansas City um, option, but we also in the last five years also have a campus in Salina, Kansas, um, about an hour north of Wichita or so. And in our classrooms here on campus and in Salina, we actually connect together. So we have students sitting here in Kansas City and we have students sitting in Salina and through these like interactive TVs around the room, um, we connect and have class together with faculty both here in Kansas City and in Salina. So that's kind of a cool aspect of our program too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but they take, you know, the, they take, um, you know, classes, pharmacology, which teaches them about the medications that we give um, to patients and why they learn all the different types of health conditions and, and disorders that patients will have. That's what I teach. It's um, a course called pathophysiology, which basically is just the, the study of diseases and how we treat them as nurses. Okay. Um, so a lot of very like science-based classes like that. And then they also get like professionalism and leadership courses too in our mm -hmm. program. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to talk to you about those that pathophysiology and, and yes. that, that's a big, yes. big word. And that's how a big word. <laughs> uh, that's really interesting that it's about what it's about and how you kind of work that into what you do on the um, clinical side or setting where you're doing the research as well. Yes, yeah. Kind of intertwines there also. Um, so while you've been a professor there, you also went back and got your uh, PhD I from did. Villanova. And yes. how did that kind of play out as far as teaching and uh, working and being there and being able to fulfill that PhD program? Yeah, absolutely. So um, not only did I do, did I teach in the classroom here at KU, I also taught in simulation here okay. for our nursing students as well. And I don't know if you're familiar with simulation or students are familiar with simulation, but um, really education that nursing students receive nowadays kind of has three parts to it. Obviously the classroom part, the sitting in class that you think of all the time when you think of college, right? Um, they go to clinical um, is another part. They actually go out with a clinical instructor in, onto the, the floors in the hospital and learn right there by the bedside with patients. But then the third aspect of the way that nursing students learn is through simulation. And so we have a simulation lab and mm -hmm. students will go to practice skills like how to give injections or how to start IVs or that kind of thing on what we refer to as high fidelity mannequins. So these mannequins talk. They have a heart rate, a blood pressure, you can feel their pulses. They they can, you know, fluctuate what's going on in terms of what's happening in their body. So I also did a lot of teaching with simulation. And um, the reason that I kind of decided to go back and get my PhD was that I, I definitely saw that in the way that nursing students learn, they kind of learned in these three separate places, right? Classroom, clinical, and sim. And oftentimes they didn't really see the interconnection of like what they're learning in the classroom actually applies when they go take care of a patient okay. or what they practiced in terms of a skill and sim actually does definitely apply to what we just talked about in the classroom. And so what I looked at for my PhD study was basically how can I kind of merge um, the way that nursing students learn? Um, right. And so what I basically looked at was I how the effect that doing simulation in the classroom has on the way that nursing students learn to think and okay. learn to like make decisions about their patients. And so um, there was really, you know, I knew eventually I was going to have to go back and get my doctorate. If you stay in academia, you're going to have to eventually think about people are right. going to be always asking you, when are you going to get your doctorate? When are you going to get your doctorate? So I always knew back in the back of my mind, it was something that I would eventually get to. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I when I started to really the need for students being able to see how all of these things connect, and that's honestly, we just weren't doing a great job in nursing ed of showing them the connections between okay. classroom and real world, um, that I decided to look at that and really study that really hard and get my get my doctorate in that. Yeah, I like how that and and just simulating some of that stuff and seeing how they connect. I think that's really yeah. important to to focus on, you know, taking the classroom stuff that you learn, the anatomy, physiology, the the book type stuff and being able to apply it to the physical hands on portion. Absolutely. That's so important. And to be honest with you, that's hard. 
it's yep. really hard to do to make that jump between I know the information in my head, I studied it for the test, but now what do I actually do about it when I have this like real life patient in front of me, you know? Um, and you know, the beautiful thing about simulation, and I, I tell my students this all the time, these patients have a reset button. <laughs> We can't hurt them, right? The way that we could maybe hurt potentially a patient in the hospital. So uh -huh. really push yourself, try new things, get uncomfortable, ask a lot of questions, because this is a really safe place in simulation to do things that we can't try. We can't try on in the right. real world when there's real life patients' lives at stake. So that's the beautiful yeah. thing about sim. Um, so with sim, I guess, too, I've, I've read an article the other day about some of the... Uh, ocular goggle type thing yeah, yes you to see a increase in in students learning that way or schools kind of trending towards that absolutely that is a really hot topic right now in simulation is virtual reality and augmented reality um you know just like students like you know as your students can think about you know putting on that oculus and doing some sort of virtual reality gaming um we're actually in trying to incorporate more and more of that into nursing education where they put on the oculus and you know even though they're just standing in an empty room in the school they put on that oculus and they're in the room with the patient and they're right. touching the patient and they're talking to the patient and they're manipulating things around the room um and so yes absolutely that is that has become a very hot trend right now in simulation education yeah i think those are those are pretty cool to see and, and to, yeah. to have access to um so you've also done a couple other little things along the way while you're working there um yeah. a legal, legal nurse expert um, talk about what that is. I mean, I have a general idea of, of what it looks like, um, yeah. but how did you kind of get into that and what do you do as a, as a legal nurse expert? Yeah. You know, this is, this is so interesting because while, you know, I've done the ER nurse thing and done the nursing education thing, the beautiful thing to really, you know, make sure that I clearly say is that nursing can open up so many other interesting opportunities and other really cool things in life that you don't necessarily think about, oh, a nurse does that, or, you know, that's something I could do as a nurse. So um, a legal nurse expert is a nurse who um, gets basically hired by um, a, a lawyer, right, by a, an, um, a law firm to review cases and to maybe even go to court for cases in which a nurse is being sued for, let's say, harm to a patient or um, a medication error was done in the clinical setting or something like that. So it's some sort of like malpractice that okay. a nurse is now in legal, um, has been, you know, um, legally sued or there's some sort of case against the nurse. And what I basically do in that role is I obviously don't know the nurse, right, who this case is up against, but I review all the documents and all the charts regarding that particular patient case where something went wrong. And I give feedback and consultation to the lawyers of, you know, um, is this defensible? You know, is this something that you feel like the nurse actually wasn't in the wrong, that the standard of care for this patient was indeed met? Um, and so help the, the lawyers who don't have a healthcare background, who aren't nurses, right. um, have a better understanding of the situation and the case in which to defend or protect a nurse who has this case against them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it gets to be very, um, a lot of paperwork and like reviewing documents, but it also in, it can end up being really interesting, you know, thinking about like your shows like Law and Order and, you know, things like that, where you, in, you often in that role will actually get called um, as, on the stand in a courtroom to okay. give your opinion and to either um you know defend or not this particular healthcare person and, and the case that's being put against them does that make sense yeah no i think that's pretty interesting i mean fascinating and, yeah. and just seeing that as as a teacher and in the classroom sort of the same sort of thing you know it's it's if, if, a, if i write up a student i have to document xyz right. this happened this happened so as nurses you have to document everything that you do yeah. with the as well if there was an injury or something like that, that, that happened. That's right. Um, That's right. Oftentimes we, we learn in nursing and in nursing school that if you didn't document it, you didn't do it. Even if you did do it, 
right? right? I mean, you really have to make sure that everything is documented, that everything is covered in that patient's chart. And oftentimes as I'm doing this legal work, um, that's exactly what the problem is. It's not necessarily that the nurse didn't do it, it's that it wasn't documented and now there's no legal evidence. Um, and so it, it can be really fascinating. And um, as, as I mentioned, it, it, it can be very much just like reviewing charts, but then it also can be very, you know, law and order and get called to the stand and be the expert witness in cases as well, which is fascinating. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Um, so then a little bit more about KU and what you have at, yeah. with the program there. Um, mm -hmm. So currently, as we mentioned, or as you mentioned, you know, you're working uh, as a nurse scientist and teaching mm -hmm. professor. Um, mm -hmm. What are you able to take from uh, the nurse scientist program and what you're researching and studying there and implement into the uh, teaching procedures? Yes, yes. So what I love about my current situation where I'm in the hospital and also in the School of Nursing is that a lot of this, the research and a lot of the projects that I'm working on right now on the hospital side are with brand new nurses, as we refer to them, new grad nurses. Right. So they're in their first year or so um, of their first nursing job. And what a lot of the research that I'm doing in the hospital is the effect that simulation and learning through simulation can kind of help their transition from being a student into being a nurse. So we refer to that as transition to practice. So, right. you know, can simulation help ease that transition and make them better, smarter, safer, more efficient new nurses? And so what's really cool and the way that these two roles that I'm currently in kind of inform each other is that I literally work with students before graduation, yep. right? And I'm getting them ready and I'm getting them thinking about what that real world looks like and how to be a good, safe, effective nurse. And then in my other role, I'm actually working with those new grads and yeah. seeing their struggles on a daily basis or their challenges in transitioning to this new world. And so both of those things kind of help me be better at the other one because I know what's happening. Like I truly have, for lack of a you know a silly pun, but like I really have you know my finger on the pulse right. <laughs> of what's going on right before graduation and right after graduation for these nurses, and right. I can educate them better on both sides because I know what's happening on the other side. If that makes sense. Yeah, that does. And so as you see them progress and develop through that you know, first those two years of nursing school and then into their first year of, of being a nurse. Um, what is it that a, you know, a perfect student would look like or your perfect applicant or perfect nurse or just envision in your head, you know, that, that person that's coming in to be a nurse, what set of skills and abilities or what do you want them to look like as coming into KU to become a nurse? Sure. Great question. So I think a lot of people would expect me to say, oh, well, you have to be smart. <laughs> um, and you do. But yeah. honestly, more than more than that is not just book smarts. Right. Um, what I see as a really attractive nursing student to me in my eyes as an educator is someone who works hard. Um, who has a little grit. Right. A little resiliency, because like I said, nursing school is not easy. Um, so it's going to be difficult. Um, Ask a lot of, don't be afraid to ask a lot of questions, be a good communicator, um, have some empathy and kindness. Um, and then that's what I would initially want to see coming in and just curiosity, right? Like how, I want to, I want to soak it all up. I want to learn as much as I can. I want to ask as many questions as I possibly can. Um, and then by the end of that two years, I want to see all that still. Um, but now I also want to see more of their nursing skills come to life, right? Like their understanding of diseases, their understanding of what nurses do. Um, you know, a lot of times it's thought that like nurses just kind of do the orders or check off the things that the doctors say to do, right? And that is not the case at all. Um, nurses can be very autonomous and very sort of independent thinking about and advocating for their patients. So I want to see those kind of skills really be starting to emerge as right before they graduate. Um, you also have to be kind of kind of quick on your feet. So time management, being efficient, being safe, all of those types of things make a really good solid nurse. Yeah, and I think, like you said, quick on your feet and being able to make a decision in that time. Yeah. Like, like you mentioned, working in the yeah. ER, there was probably mm -hmm. a lot of times where you had to make a decision that would be 
pause, or I mean, very important decisions within a couple seconds. That's right. That's right. And in nursing, we refer to that decision making ability as like making a clinical judgment. Um, oh. That's what nurses do all the time. That's what I'm particularly really fascinated in. And like, how can we get our nursing students to be really good decision makers at doing those clinical judgments? And that's actually one of the things that I study um, okay. now that I'm a researcher is um, particularly like how can learning through simulation make yeah. you better at clinical judgment? Yeah. Oh, I think I think that definitely could. You know, you simulate, simulate, simulate. That's right. That's said, right. Try the different things and try it this way. Try it this way. That's right. Because uh, there's that reset button. Absolutely. And simulation is such a good contextual, like experiential way to learn that's going to develop the way that you think so much faster than just like sitting in a classroom passively listening to your teacher. Blah 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 blah. Right. Um, the fact that you're like in there, like up to your elbows thinking and like experiencing it actually makes your development of the way that you think um, so much more stronger. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So as they're one or two years into the job, what kind of professional development are you seeing as far as um, students uh, to recertify and keep their, their certification and credentials? Yeah, so now as they transition into that first or second year, now we're hoping that um, a lot of their skills like kind of more of their just like what we refer to as like tasky skills, like being how to put an injection or starting an IV, like that's taken care of now, right? Like they should be pretty good at that. Now, as they kind of transition into that, that next section of their career, um, we are really thinking about their more like cognitive, like thinking abilities, right? So noticing, let's say um, having the confidence and the skill set to notice when a patient that was doing fine now starts to deteriorate um, and they're not doing so great. And being able to think fast and act fast, that's something that's really important in those first couple of years. Um, their ability to communicate with the families of patients and the, the other providers, physicians, nurse practitioners, pharmacists, PTs, OTs, like all of that multidisciplinary environment that they work in now and being able to, to communicate there really well. Um, that's what I, in my opinion, a really well adjusted, you know, new nurse is able to do. Um, and to use kind of like I also mentioned, like kind of delegate when they can, because their nurses are busy and, you know, they're, they're just running the whole time that they're there. Yep. So how can they delegate? How can they um, give different, you know, roles to different people when they're busy? How do they prioritize? Oh my gosh, I have four patients and they all need something from me right now. How am I going to prioritize who I see first, second, third, and fourth? Who, who, you know, basically who needs me in five minutes, who needs me in 35 minutes, who can wait for a couple of hours, you know, all of that kind of like mental work and cognitive work is what we really want to see start to develop in those first couple of years after graduation. Good. Um, and we've kind of touched at it on a little bit, uh, but industry trends for nurses, um, are you, I mean, the last two years, like we've talked about, you know, that's been a, a big Oof, yeah. win, uh, mm -hmm. for all educators, but yeah. uh, I'm especially in the nursing because you need to be hands on with those patients. Yeah. What kind of industry trends have you seen over the last year or two that um, you guys have implemented in school or that mm -hmm. nurses in general have have had to adapt and overcome? Yeah. Well, yeah, the pandemic has been a huge challenge for nursing um, for obvious reasons. Right. But, um, you know, it has left us, you know, not I don't even know that it's technically the pandemic's over, but now it has left us in the wake of a pretty profound nursing shortage that was already there pre pandemic. And now we're really there. Um, so we have to think a lot about how we're going to make a career in nursing sustainable for people, um, because it is so difficult and intense and busy that we, I think one of the things that's really emerged pre, during, and now hopefully maybe sort of post um, pandemic is what we can do to make the experience of the day-to-day -day nurse's job more sustainable, um, to think about their well-being to think about uh, preventing burnout and, and, and think about how we're gonna keep these really good nurses there taking really good care of patients for as long as we can. Right. And um, oftentimes I feel like that has gotten um, maybe not the full attention that 
is needed in the industry of nursing and COVID really shined a light on how important it is to sort of protect and take care of the nursing workforce. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that kind of trickles into, you know, just a lot of the, a lot of the healthcare professions in general, but there, there was a big boom, I feel like of people getting healthcare degrees and then now some of that burnout and, and yeah. washout and um, yeah. started to trend back up, hopefully. Yes. Uh, um, if you were to change something that you were have done along your path or done along your way uh, to get to where you are in your career professionally now, is there anything you would go back and change or do differently? I don't think so. Like I, I really, I really can look back now in hindsight at all the steps and all the like chapters of my nursing career that's gotten me to where I am here today. Yeah. I'm like it all makes sense. It all okay. makes sense. Like every every progression led to the next thing which made sense which led me to the next thing which made sense. I feel like it's all been this process of just building um mm -hmm. on one experience to the next. This is a really silly example but this is the thing that pops in my mind and I often tell my own students this. Um I never worked in an ICU, like in a critical care unit. Yeah. I, I only did ER both in you know St. Louis, New York, and Philly. And sometimes they feel like, I think I would have really liked that. Um, it's still very high acuity the way that the emergency room is, but maybe a little more under control. It's not like people are coming in off the street, right? They're, they're a little more stabilized yeah. in yeah. the ICU. And so I often tell, tell my students, I think I was an ICU nurse stuck in an ED nurse's body. <laughs> So maybe I would have liked to have done a little bit of that like ICU nursing, um, but that's a silly example. Yeah. Um, on a really big, important scale, I have no regrets. I think yeah. everything that I've done in my career has led me to where I am now and and I'm thankful for it. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, like you kind of said, just maybe having one different experience here or yeah. there along the way that maybe would have changed the path, but maybe not. So right, right. Uh, Professionally, what are you most proud of achieving? I'm I'm really proud of the connection that I feel like I can have with students. Um, again, I think that stems from, there was a couple of really important professors in my life um, as a nursing student that I feel like making that connection and letting people see their potential and the value that they have as a nurse and the difference that they're going to end up making in the world. I really enjoy having and am very proud of that connection that I think I'm able to strike with my own students and motivating them to do the same and to go out in the world and make big differences. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so then with those connections and, and where you've been able to achieve what you have so far, um, where do you kind of see yourself professionally 10 years down the road? Hmm, that's a good question. I have, let me put it this way. I have noticed that in my career, every step and every chapter, it's like my, my view gets a little bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So I started at the very, like, very um, specific level of being at the bedside in the ER. Right. And then I got a little broader when I went to grad school and started teaching. Um, now I'm in the classroom. Now, instead of reaching one patient, I'm reaching 130 students in a classroom, right? Um, then when I got my PhD and did this study on the effect that simulation in the classroom has on the way that students learn, that opened up even broader for my career. Now I've, um, that, that allowed me and has opened up a lot of doors to publish articles, to speak nationally, to present at conferences. Um, and so I feel like now my scope is even broader. It's not just my 130 students in my classroom. Now it's all the people um, who are reading my articles or listening to my presentations, you know, um, and I think I will continue to see, I hope that breadth of my career um, being made on, on hopefully being able to make an impact more on a national level as well of what I'm learning about the best way to teach students, the best way to impact patients, the best evidence-based ways to do those things because of the research as I do as a nurse scientist. Um, and so I hope that, I think my answer, a really long-winded answer to your question is that my knowledge and my expertise keeps getting broader and reaching more people. Yeah. If that makes sense. 
yeah, I like that. I mean, it, it broadening your scope and spectrum of increasing your the the audience, yeah, uh, yeah. and the the uh, more people about the the safety and and ability to perform their jobs correctly. Yeah. Uh, this next one is kind of a four part build, I guess, if you will. We're going to go from a high school student to a college undergrad. Uh, someone getting ready to graduate and then that employee for, uh, you know, that first year employee. Um, as far as a high school student that thinks they're interested in becoming a nurse, what advice would you have for them as far as um, maybe shadowing or looking for jobs as a high school mm -hmm. student or just kind of how to get their feet wet and see if yeah. nurses Something Absolutely. I think if I think if a high school student is really interested in pers in learning more about ed uh, about nursing, um, that they should do a couple of things. I think one shadowing, um, especially in a in an area of nursing that they think they might be interested in. So yeah. you know, in my case, you know, reaching out and finding a way to shadow in an emergency room for a few hours, um, and even more than shadowing, looking for like summer jobs, right? Where you can be um, a, a care tech or something like that in on a unit, on a floor um, and being able to get that kind of experience, even like in um, like nursing homes, right? Or um, um, some type of like care area like that. In fact, our program here at KU really looks at that really looks at high school students healthcare experience um you know were they a certified nursing assistant did they volunteer in a hospital or a nursing home those types of things are really important yeah cool um and then a undergraduate that is getting ready to apply for nursing school you know they they're in their second year of undergraduate school uh, and they're looking at nursing schools what advice would you have for them maybe for the application process or how to choose a nursing program uh, along yeah. that way. Yeah, absolutely. In that case, I would really encourage them to reach out to like the um, student affairs department of particular nursing schools that they're interested in. Um, I know our student affairs um, department here at KU is excellent. Um, they are so student friendly. They, they will talk to you on the phone, they will FaceTime with you, they will Zoom with you to answer your questions. Um, so I guess I would say to those students, don't ever be afraid to reach out, don't hesitate to reach out yeah. and um, really be able to get in talk to contact with those people in those like admissions offices. And when I said like student affairs, that's what I meant. Right. Like be, become good friends with the people in student admissions. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then the person that is getting ready to graduate, maybe they are, uh, let's say, three to six months away from graduating. Uh, they're starting to look for jobs and positions. Uh, what advice would you have for that student um, that's getting ready to graduate? Yeah. Um, in that case, I would say um, maybe find a coach or someone to sort of walk you through the actual like application hiring interview stage. Okay. Um, you know, the way that you come off in an interview with a nurse manager or leadership in a hospital can really sell yourself um, to really sell your knowledge, your expertise, why that particular nursing department needs you and why they shouldn't live without you. Right. <laughs> um, I, I always tell my students to find someone who can kind of even do like a mock interview with you right. or walk you through some of those kind of difficult questions that might pop up so that you're not taken off guard when they come up in an actual real life interview. Yeah, I'm sure there's some some good questions being asked. Oh, yeah nurse nursing interviews uh and and real life experience and with those questions um and then that person that's been employed now for six months kind of the person that you're working with and seeing in the in your studies uh what advice do you have for that six month employee that's ready to to continue working yeah. So what's really interesting about that six month mark usually out of nursing school is that they hit this interesting like wall um, where they're like, whoa, this is hard. This is I'm not in Kansas anymore. No, no, uh, you know, pun intended. Right. But like, oh, my goodness, this is really hard. I thought nursing school was hard nurse. I want to go back to nursing school. <laughs> compared to this, right. There's this really hard, like, um, 
transition that they go through right about that six month mark where they really kind of start to question things and, and wonder like, did I have the right choice? And I think to that person, I would say, yes, you did. Yes, you did. What you're feeling in this transition, like this metamorphosis, right, that you're undergoing from student to nurse um, is completely normal. Um, and there will be times where you feel like you want to quit or you're asking yourself, did I really do the right thing? This is really hard. Um, and I would, you know, I would say that this is normal and that you, you know, that there are other people who feel like you and to reach out for help and have good resources and good support people. But just to, I, I also went through a very similar experience like that as a six month new grad, but I don't think anyone ever told me that. And so I really wondered, like, is there something wrong with me? You know? Um, and if someone would have just said like, at about the six month mark, you're going to hit this wall. Right. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm at the wall. Now I know. Right. Sure. But I didn't know that. And so I think that's always something I like to tell people at about that mark. I think that, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And especially just, and you probably hit the, a little bit of the, I've, I've reached the limit of, I uh, maybe not the limit, but I, I know, I know these one skills and I'm doing them really well, but now there's all this other kind of right. encompassing with those skills. Yes. yes. I think you actually said it better than I did, but yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any book recommendations that you might recommend for a, a high school student or a mm -hmm. undergrad student that's seriously thinking about nursing? Oh, that is such a good question. It could be something, just a, maybe an anatomy book that you really like or a specific book that you think is interesting that you've shared with your students in your classes. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that if you're if you if you truly are interested in that aspect of of a health career and that you're really interested in, in nursing education, that I think, yeah, I mean, I think I don't know that I have a specific like anatomy and physiology book, right. but any type of book like that, um, that where you can really start to see the connections between kind of what you may, might have learned about in high school or in biology or things like that and how, how it actually applies to a human body. Um, I think that's really powerful. There's also, I know it's not a book, but there's also really great apps and really great, like um, in more interactive things on YouTube. If people are particularly interested in like, how does the heart beat and what, how does the heart, you know, how does the blood move through the four chambers? Um, there's some great apps and some great videos to kind of show you that as well. But um, I think that's sort of be my answer to that. I don't have one great Great book yeah. that I usually like promote. <laughs> right. no, I think I think the apps and, and the YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. I know the, a nurse uh, app that or a YouTube channel that I follow that goes through a lot of those different yeah. things about nursing and how to how to become a nurse and what they do on a daily basis. Um, this next question is from our athletic trainer, and it's if you dislike blank, then being a nurse or athletic for, for her as an athletic trainer was not for her, and it was if you dislike feet because she's constantly wrapping and taping ankles. And that kind of stuff. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. If you just like blank, then being a nurse is not the right career path for you. If you dislike blood. Yeah. Being a nurse is not the, cor the correct uh, career path for you. I could definitely see that coming from the ER side of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or, and, and what I mean by that is just like anything, like if the, the thought of like needles or getting stuck or sticking someone or doing some type of procedure makes your stomach turn might not be the best thing for you. <laughs> Having that, that strong sense of sight versus uh, stomach ability. Yes. There's a good connection between that. Right. <laughs> um, second part of the question is if you do like blank, then being a nurse is the right career path for you. Um, if you do like the, the combination of science and caring, okay. then nursing is the correct career path for you. I think that's one of the coolest things about nursing is that it's very scientific. It's very science-based, but yet you're doing it in this really cool way where you're actually being able to like care and touch people's lives. And there's not a, that's, that's a really cool combination. Yeah. I, I think that that hits it right on the head. Um, last thing is, do you have a mantra or quote that you kind of live your life through? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and it's a mantra that I found very early on in my life, actually as a high school student, like getting ready to graduate and go out into the world and go start college and start my career. Um, and it's by Thoreau, Henry David Thoreau, and it is live the life you've imagined, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. And even as a very young person, yes, yes, I started with that quote as a very young person, but it has continued to guide me throughout my career and throughout my life as I made choices, as I made different decisions along my career path of, will this help me live the life that I saw for myself? Will this help me live the life that I wanted to eventually be or eventually get to? And it's really guided a lot of those decisions in my life. Yeah, I think uh, and that's pretty cool that you found that quote so early in life and and kind of stuck with it throughout your, your path. Um, thank you so much for this time and spending it with us. If someone's interested in becoming a nurse or the nursing program at KU, um, do you have any social media or uh, website advice that they could get to and, and get in contact with people? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the KU School of Nursing is very active on especially like LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, and I, I think Twitter as well, actually, I'm just not as familiar with that one. Um, but yes, absolutely. Social media, um, they're, they're very active there. And then also, you know, just going to our school of nursing website, um, you'll be able to find, like I, I mentioned, the kind of student affairs department, um, admissions office. And like I said, we have very user-friendly, very personable people in that department that you can absolutely reach out to, and they'll be, they're really good at connecting and getting back to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this hour. We really appreciate it and uh, hope you have a great day. All right. Thank you. You too. If you've made it this far into the episode, I want to thank you again for watching. Please subscribe, share, and comment below with any questions or comments you may have. If you're interested in more information about other professions within healthcare careers, please visit healthsciencecoach.com and talk to your school counselor or academic advisor. As always, stay happy, healthy, and live life with passion. Thank you.